What's up guys? How are you doing? It's Angry Roll Player here and all the time has come uh, to see what we're gonna play in fucking season 8. Oh my god. So basically if you're forced to play this shit again and again like me, we have to sit here and find out what class would be the easiest to get the fucking stashed up. The final fucking stashed up once and for all and when we're gonna end this shit hopefully. So you know, uh, last uh, last uh, video about the season 7 what from, from a perspective uh, what class would be good after all the nerfs that happened uh, when the patch, you know, when the patch launched. But now Season 8 will be exactly the same as Season 7. So it, from the first look it looks like, you know, it's easy to understand what we're gonna play in Season 8 because Season 7 was exactly the same. You just, uh, we can check the leaderboards basically and see what class was the best there. And that's, that's exactly what I wanted to do uh, first. So I made this spreadsheet and I actually spent some <laughs> considerable amount of time ca calculating all the data and basically we see here the highest clears for both softcore, hardcore in each region uh, for each class solo and 2, 3 and 4 player and also the top build that did that clear. So I gathered all information here in one data sheet guys. What we're gonna see here, it's quite interesting. So first of all, look at the Barbarian. So a hundred has been done in season 7. And it has been done on China on Chinese server with the free k Paragon guys. And uh, from the first glance you, uh, you can see that it's in green, it's the highest clearest. And it's this kind of a... no... What is this? It's... Uh, uh, what is this? I forgot. I forgot the. Ah, it's pink. Yeah, it's a kind of you no know, pink. In this kind of pink, it's uh, the lowest clear per region. So, if you look here, guys, so the China clear did all the highest clears, almost all the highest clear on softcore. You know, that's not. Uh, uh, that's. That's kind of it easy to realize because they have the experience boost. In case you didn't know, in China the game is paid to win, so you can pay and you can have experience boost, and that's the only reason why you can see the top clears only in fucking China because they can buy experience and can buy stash tops, they can buy transmogs. As far as I heard, they can buy all the shit in this game, so it's paid to win. And the barb in China got 3,000 paragons in season in season seven. That's fucking ridiculous. That's why the difference in the highest and the lowest clear is five grifts. That's a lot. And they got the a, a hundred a hundred great river has been cleared in China with the uh, Raycourse uh, Immortal Kings Charger. And I would also like to say that it's been uh, the for the third season for the Charger, the season seven was the third season for the Charger. But in hardcore, the situation is absolutely identical. You know, Asia it looks like Chinese players. They absolutely like barbarians, and uh, the top clearing was also in China with 94 with the same right course, uh, Immortal Kings Charger, and the lowest was in USA. With 95 in uh, softcore and 90 in uh, hardcore. For Crusader, it's the same fucking shit, absolutely. The, no the long terms bomb they did 103 in China and uh, on hardcore, Asia did actually 99 with the terms bomb, 99. And Europe got the, the lowest clear of 95 in hardcore and Asia got the lowest on softcore 98. That's kind of weird, you know, kind of weird. For the Demon Hunter, the long Shimizu Horror is fun of nice build. 
again China 98 and Asia with the lowest 96 uh, but it's all different in hardcore Americans did 97 with uh, the same launching Mizu Haori fan of knives build but you, the, the Europeans didn't give a shit about the demon hunter just in 92 guys which doctor that's pretty interesting data here the hell two fire a hundred in China and in USA it was 1997, but it was the classic Helltooth Gargantuns build guide. Classic Helltooth Gargantuns. And uh, with the fire bats, the guy also had 3000 paragons. Cause that's the difference. The huge amount of paragons in China is it's um, completely unbeatable. In soft, in hardcore. Uh, actually, 93 was done in USA. It's the top build uh, with the hell to Gargantuan, by the way, because it was a classic hell to Gargantuan because the hell to Garf is just much more safer than the fire breath. So obviously, it was a choice for a uh, hardcore. And uh, 92 was also done with the hell to Garg, but the lowest was. Was there was also the hell to fight the leaf, but it was just 92. But the difference is not is not that significant, really. That one great rift for the wizard. That wizard was blowing the shit out of everything. Absolutely, Firebird Archon Wizard. The Europe actually had, uh, you know, exceeded the China and. Uh, that's the only the only spot where the Europe got the top clear. It's with a Firebird Archon Wizard they get a hundred and three, and the China and Asia also got a hundred and three, but a little a little you know long. It took them a little longer to clear. But the lowest a hundred and two is for USA. In hardcore, it's a bit different, but it's almost the same for Europe as what place one, absolute 101 for Europe in hardcore with the Firebird Archon again, Firebird Archon. But Asia with the lowest 96, absolutely, <laughs> it's so funny. Sometimes this Asia didn't give a shit. Seems to me like, and Asia is a Korean server, by the way. Now we go to the group play. Group play is also quite interesting. China prevails all the way, guys. All the way. The Paragons, they are still so strong in this game. Stupid fucking Paragon. So 100, 102 has been done in China with a Firebird Wizard and Z Barb. And the rest of the clears are quite interesting as well. They are so different. A hundred has been done in Europe with the wizard, uh, uh, with the firebird wizard and Z monk, and a hundred has been done in Asia with the wizard and the Z crusader. That's like, what the fuck? Seriously, that was very interesting, clear guys. And the new USA, it's same the wizard and Z monk as well. And hardcore, it's pretty interesting. Europe with the hundred and one. With the firebird wizard at Z Monk, as you can see, the China got the Z Barb here. But the hard horse Z Monk is more important, so it's firebird wizard and Z Monk at 101 in Europe. Uh, and the the lowest two, the lower two was the wizard and Z Monk and the wizard and Z Monk 97. But the lowest was in Asia, and it was just 91. Like they didn't give a shit about two men, two players at all, two players, guys. Like they didn't give a shit, absolutely. Three players is also interesting. A hundred and twelve with the monk, witch doctor with the fire breaths and Z barb, Z barb, Z monk and the witch doctor. A hundred and twelve for China again with the crazy fucking paragons. Uh, second place Europe and Europe was actually with two monks with generator monk with the witch doctor fire breath and the Z monk as well 111 that's interesting and the lowest clear was in Asia that are giving didn't give, give a shit again 
but in hardcore it's all very different. USA got rank 1 here world with 107 and it was a monk, a witch doctor and the barb and the barb guys. But the lowest was in China, like this China didn't give a shit about free player group rift. Just 101 is it's it's very low, much lower, like six rifts lower than the top clear. It's weird. Now the four players, it's shiny again with 116. And it's two monks, Witch Doctor and the Barb. And one monk is the generator monk. Nothing spectacular here. So the monk, uh, the, the DPS monk and the ZDPS monk, fire bats, hell tooth and the ZDPS barb here. 160, the top clear world in China. And these clears were also very close, very close in USA and Asia, 160, almost the same, same setup. But the lowest was in Europe, by the way. It was just a 115. And on hardcore, it's almost the same, but Asia got the. <laughs> strangely, Asia got the top clear. 111. With the same setup Generator Monk, Z Monk, Witch Doctor, Fire Bats, and the Z Bar. But the lowest clear was in China again. Like the China don't give a shit about. Three player or four player, really, it's just the lowest 106. So this is it, guys. And let's just take a look. What's the most, you know, DPSing, DPSing class in was in season seven, and what's the most supportive class in season seven? So the most important classes, from my perspective, are the Hell Tooth Fire Bats. The Hell 2 Fire Bats was always the DPS from 2 player, 3 player and 4 player. And the only uh, class where it was not the DPS it was the 2 player. But on 3 and 4, the Fire Bats, a Hell 2 or Fire Bats are a here, which Doctor is very important because he has massive area damage. He's in, his will be the same DPS spot in Season 8, absolutely. That's not even a question another good class that will be always a dps i believe and that was absolutely stay it's the generator raymond monk absolutely At the raymond shenlong's monk he will stay and he will still be wrecking shit into pieces absolutely as you can see there were three classes that are strong in solo as well they were the Legacy of Nightmares, Bombardment, Taunts, uh, the Firebird, Archon, Wizard and the Rayman, Shenlong, Generator, Monk. There are three DPS classes and three DPS builds that are very powerful. And if you want to be high on the leaderboards and be in the DPS meta, you have to go with the Firebird, Archon, Wizard or the Generator Monk and for group play is of course the Generator, Raymond Monk, not even a question, yeah. The Bombs Crusader is extremely extremely good in solo but in group it has no spot at all so it's just for solo. And as a support also the Monk is exceptionally good, there will always be Monk as a support because he has healing and debuffs and damage reduction, he is extremely good at support and in grouping the mods, he is fucking priceless in this game. So it looks like now the monk is both good as the DPS and the Z DPS as well. The barb is also essential. It's also essential, but as you can see on hardcore. The two players they didn't use the barb really. That they, they used the Z monk still was better than the barb and if you have to get rid of someone the barb or monk then you have to get rid of barb because because he has less you know she just gives a lot of toughness and buffs and debuffs but Z monk gives healing and healing for hardcore for hardcore is essential it's very important so uh, this is it guys and let's take a look at the starters, uh, the, the gift set that we have in season 8 also as well. 
So Barbarian got the Immortal King's Call, guys. It's fucking bullshit. It's crap. It's horse diarrhea, seriously. And you know what that means, but guys, you need to get the rare core species, and you basically gonna play the charger, the rare cores in Immortal King six piece charger for fourth season in a row. Fourth season in a row for charger. That's fucking retarded. I don't know who's gonna play this poor barbarian seriously. You know, only play play barbarian if you never played the barb in life, absolutely even once. But poor barbarians, guys, seriously, fourth season of the charger is beyond retarded, guys. Seriously, I don't know who's gonna play the barb in this season, guys. Seriously, that's that's fucking horrible. So Crusader got the Seeker of Light. Now that's a not good, you know. <laughs> Kind of a rise of the Hermadine in season 8. Uh, Seeker of Light is a good set, it has a lot of damage, but it's also very squishy, guys. Very squishy. Holy shit. It's pretty hard to play uh, in Great Rift, and it's, and, you know, it's in torments, it's nice, it's pretty fast. It's really fast and it does a lot of damage. And you can farm Torment 13 with the Seeker of Light and the Hermadine, not a problem wrecks shit out of everything absolutely but in great reef solo it's kind of squishy and i think it will have no spot in uh, groups as well because you know it will die over and over again you have to sacrifice the unity in groups and it will become it becomes really squishy really squishy but as a starter set i think that secret of light is still still so much better than the rollins the poor Roland set piece of junk seriously the crusader secret of light is really nice starter set guys and also if you want to play crusader you can then you know, respect into the invokers or to the tones bomb the long tones bomb everything else you will need so secret of light is a good starter set guys then we go to the demon hunter natalian's vengeance the demon hunter all around is one of the fastest and the best uh, classes to complete your seasonal journey Nets vengeance strafe and uh, the fan of knives build is really powerful and i've seen that the strafe build for Nets vengeance it does so much damage and it's incredibly fast and torments farming just fucking you know like a storm comes through the rift it's absolutely destroys everything so it's a really good choice if you want to complete your seasonal journey really fast Demon Hunter, you can start with Nats Vengeance and then you go to the Unholy Essence, you know, classic multi shot build, and they just break into fucking pieces everything. So, Demon Hunter is like you know, choice number one if you want to complete seasonal journey fast. And I think that might be my choice in season 8 because I don't really want to play it anymore and I want to get the stash up as fast as possible. And I haven't played. Demon Hunter for like you know over a year already. I haven't touched the Demon Hunter at all, so that may be good a good reason for me to get some uh, you know the gear that I missed for the last year. Okay, Monk Juliana Stratagem. You know, I'm a fan of Juliana's Exploding Palm is so fucking fun. Seriously, I enjoyed what was in season six. Absolutely, Juliana's was so nice. And it's also had a, a good speed farming builds as well, and it's quite powerful in uh, the Great Rifts as well. Even though the Generator Monk is very powerful and absolutely beats Julianas, but Julianas is no joke, it's very powerful as well. And it looks like this is what I'm gonna play in season 7. I think that we will play Julianas because no, I mean, just enjoying Exploding Palm, and Monk is also always have a spot in uh, the group meta I can always respect into ZDPS monk and I will be always have a spot in the group also and then I could also farm my uh, you know uh, Raymond uh, Shenlong and it just start DPS again so monk is like all around the best class he is quite fast in solo 
effective in solo, powerful and also fast in uh, the torment farming, absolutely. You can also play Lashing Tail Kick Monk or the Wave of Light Monk, it's absolute everything. You know, Monk is good at everything, absolutely, in this game. It's like the only class that is so universal. So which doctor spirit of Ara here now that's pretty nice because you know you can be in the DPS meta with the spirit of Ara here it's very powerful as well but unfortunately we can't really speed farm tournament 13 with spirit of Ara here it's just slow and weak you know it's not slow you can get your mana jumas to peace and be fast but overall it's clanky and the damage of the set as well is weak Outside of fire breads, you know, the explosions of the Hex and the Angry Chicken, that's their week for Tournament 13. I had, I made a speed farming build for the Spirit of Ara here two seasons ago. And it's exceptionally fast for gem leveling for lower tiers, like, you know, for Tournament 6 to Tournament uh, you know, 11 or 12. It's very fast and it's almost as fast as the Hell Tooth. Even faster than the hill too, but on tournament 13, on the last tiers of of farming, it becomes slow, ineffective, and the damage is not enough. So unfortunately, with spirit of Ara here, you uh, won't be available. You won't be. It's it's just not possible to speed farm effectively. Uh, you know, in, on the normal torments. So Spirit of Ara here will be good as the DPS, but in, in solo play uh, it's just, I don't think that it will be as good as the Helltooth because the Gargantuans are so much, so much safer and so much pow more powerful at the very beginning of the game so it will be hard to gain power for Spirit of Ara here, it will be really hard. Now poor wizards got weird amazing arcana, holy shit guys. No one plays Weirs for like, you know, three last seasons. Can't even remember when Weirs was good. It was so much time ago. But the guys got, the wizards got the Weirs and it's like as bad as Mola King's Call. It's even worse than that, guys. Weirs amazing arcana. The, no, uh, the Archon and the Weirs, it's kind of decent. But the amount of CDR that you need to make this build effective is completely retarded and that the starter build is the worst of all, absolutely worst, worst of all. Outside of Archon, the Weirs does no fucking damage whatsoever and to be uh, in Archon you need a ridiculous amount of CDR and also you need some supportive gear as Chinturus as well. Or some other good, uh, you know, stuff like explosive, um, explosive blast, uh, wind, or something like that. So this is the worst starting set, absolutely the worst. And seriously, the poor wizards and the poor barbarians this uh, season eight, guys. <laughs> I also want to mention one interesting thing uh, because. Uh, in Europe, two clears was done with the Jade guys. Two clears, not two, maybe one. I need to double check. But uh, 98 has been done uh, with the Jade. So the Jade is not far actually. For Solar Push, push Jade is not bad. Absolutely. But we get the arrow here, so we need to respect into Jade later on. Uh, but Jade is also a good choice guys, a good choice, absolutely. We will see now what Jade has done. And uh, this stuck. And this season 7. Yeah. Now that's just one. Ordian just cleared the Jade, it was 90, uh, 98 clear and then they go, there are the Helltooths, yeah. Yeah, I was a little wrong, so it was, but this wasn't one clear guys, one clear was the, with the Jade. But the Jade is still powerful. So this is it guys, uh, let's summarize all the information here. In Season 7, uh, for Solo, 
Crusader was strong, Monk was very strong and the Wizard was very strong uh, in Season 7 in Solo. In group play, your best bet is the Generator Monk, uh, the Hell 2 Fire Bats, all the area here Fire Bats, uh, Witch Doctor. And as a ZDPS, your best bet is the Monk and the Barb. So this is it guys, that's, that's your choices for Season 8. Because it will be no different than season 7, it's all the same shit again. Just the different starter sets, but I already told that the starter sets, they are also very strange. Barbarians and Wizards will be the weakest starter set this season. And I think that the Monks, Demon Hunter and Crusader have the best starter sets, because they are all very strong from the beginning. Secret of Light. Rex into fucking pieces is really strong. Natalia's Vengeance very strong from the beginning, and Juliana's Stratagem also very effective, very strong as a starter set. This is it, guys. I hope you found my information valuable, and uh, you need you will choose your uh, you no know, character wisely in season eight if you are gonna play this bullshit over and over again like me. I am forced to play this shit because it looks like it's the final stash up and I have no fucking idea what will be after that. Uh, the areas are, will be uh, you know, 12 months long since then and the non-seasonal gameplay will be dead and I have no idea what will happen with the season. It looks like there um, uh, Blizzard will, will not try to in intensify seasons like that happened I know uh, with the first seasons when there were exclusive legendaries exclusive gems and uh, exclusive mats and everything all this shit we don't have anything of this for the last three seasons so basically there's no need to intensify seasons anymore and I'm very curious at what will happen in, in the season 9 it will be the first season uh, when uh, we'll be we will see some uh, the future of Diablo. I think that will that will happen in season 9 So thanks for watching guys and the new guides and new builds upcoming of course. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon